Welcome back to the Bitcoin layer. Today's video is about a Bitcoin on-chain metric called Coin Lifespan and how we can use Coin Lifespan to identify where we are in Bitcoin cycle and even help us identify Bitcoin price floors. So remember that on-chain analysis uses the data that we get from Bitcoin's blockchain, which is public, to identify behavior of buyers and sellers and participants in the network by looking at the data of when and at what price coins move on the Bitcoin blockchain. We've already made a video about realized price. This is a metric that attempts to identify the cost basis in dollar terms of Bitcoin, but with coin lifespan, we are attempting to measure the duration for which buyers have held their coins. This means what is the age of the long position in the market? So let's bring this chart on the screen. What we have here is a way to measure a concept called dormancy. If we think about coin lifespan, what we're doing is we're looking at all the slices of the Bitcoin network Formerly, these are called UTXOs or the unspent transaction outputs. This is every little slice of the Bitcoin network. And we can look at how long each one of these slices has been dormant. That means how long has that slice not moved on the Bitcoin blockchain? When would a slice move? When an investor decides to take Bitcoin out of cold storage and send it to an exchange to sell, for example, or even to put it on an exchange in anticipation of selling. So when dormancy rises, this means a larger percentage of the Bitcoin slices, the UTXOs, are staying dormant. They are not moving, and investors are basically keeping them in whatever form of storage, maybe cold storage, maybe another form. And that means that the Bitcoin is not set up for trading. It's in a cold environment or an offline environment. And that's why we call it dormancy. It's because we can think of these Bitcoin slices as sleeping. So when we bring up this chart here, which is called the percentage of supply last active one plus years ago, what we're doing is we're looking at how much of Bitcoin is sleeping? How much of the Bitcoin UTXOs are lying dormant? They haven't moved for one or more years. This is a very important metric to understand because it tells us a lot about the behavior of long positions. When this percentage is up, that means coins are sleeping. When the percentage is down, it means that long positions are taking their Bitcoin out of sleeping positions and putting them into awake positions. This means either putting them on the exchange to sell right now or putting them on the exchange to get ready to sell sometime soon. When this ratio is rising, that means coins are being put to sleep. When this ratio is falling, it means that coins are being woken up. Now ask yourself, what is a better recipe for a bull market? coins that are being put to sleep, or coins that are being woken up. You got it. It's coins that are being put to sleep. So when this ratio is rising, that means more Bitcoin is becoming dormant. When more Bitcoin becomes dormant, that means less is available for purchase when buyers come back into the market. So it's important to understand that this dormancy rising it's not a signal that a bull market is about to begin. No, instead, it's a metric that we can use to identify at what price we believe that a floor is being established. Let's look at history to explain this a little bit more and identify what exactly dormancy tells us. Okay, so let's look at the previous cycle. Right now, I'm looking at the 2016 peak in dormancy. That means in 2016, the supply last active one or more years ago reached this level of about 60%. This means that 60% of Bitcoin at that time had been dormant for one or more years. Now, the Bitcoin price had its absolute floor in 2015, so we know that a peak in dormancy 
doesn't tell us when Bitcoin is going to be at its absolute minimum. And we can also see that Bitcoin's price had had its first big move up before dormancy had reached this point. So it doesn't even identify the beginning of the bull market. But let's look at what happens after dormancy peaks and it slowly starts to decline, which is what happened after this point in 2016. The price starts to move higher. What we can see behaviorally is that when dormancy peaks, it's from this point that Bitcoin's bull run can really start to gain momentum. We saw a huge bull run in 2017, and that correlated with a fall in dormancy. Okay, now let's look at 2020. What we see here is that dormancy peaked a little bit below 65% and started going down. Bitcoin had its price bottom in 2019, so a year before dormancy peaked. So again, not a way to identify the bottom itself. Instead, when dormancy peaks, we look at the price where Bitcoin is trading and we start to assume that this is the price that Bitcoin long positions are not going to relinquish. In 2020, this was around 10K, and we see that Bitcoin had its huge move from 10,000 to about $70,000 that came after this peak in dormancy. Now, what have we learned? When dormancy is up, it sets up a springboard for positive price action for Bitcoin because long positions have tucked their Bitcoin away to sleep and they're not ready to bring that Bitcoin out into the market until way later. We also learn that when dormancy falls, this means that Bitcoin long positions are ready to sell to bull market chasers and momentum chasers. So we should be able to use falling dormancy as a sign that a bull market is running out of steam. So let's look at today and where dormancy is and what information we might gather from that. Right now, dormancy is at an all-time high. The amount of Bitcoin that are dormant, that means they haven't moved in one or more years, is at 65%. This is a record. So remember that we can't use this dormancy as a sign that the Bitcoin price has bottomed. We don't even know if this is the top in dormancy. Dormancy could certainly keep moving up. What we are to gather from this level of dormancy right here is that Bitcoin long positions are starting to tuck Bitcoin away in preparation for a bull market. This lines up with our TBL confluence price, which looks at the 200 week moving average, the realized price, which is another on-chain metric, and also the electricity input costs to mining Bitcoin. And we're starting to see all of these metrics tell us that this $20,000 area should represent the floor for this cycle. So with dormancy reaching all-time highs, what we can gather is that Bitcoin is being put away by long investors, and these investors are preparing for a bull run. We don't know when that bull run is coming. We just know that at this price, this is the price that investors are willing to take coins out of the market and out of the active supply. It should set up for a good bull run. We just don't know when that is going to come. Look to our next video in which we break down the Fed cycle and the global macro cycle to give us a better indication of when we might see a bull run in Bitcoin really start to get going. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and let us know what type of on-chain metrics are you watching to give you a sense of where we are in this Bitcoin cycle. Thank you to my sponsor, Voltage. Voltage is a great Bitcoin and Lightning Network company that is focused on providing infrastructure for businesses and people that want to spin up Bitcoin and Lightning nodes. Make sure to get Voltage's help setting up your node today.